Have you ever wondered what it's like to be the immortal inside of Diablo Immortal? Have you ever wondered what it's like to have all of your friends become immortals with you? And what is it like once you're there? Well, today I'm interviewing Captain Nemo from the Scrappy Academy YouTube channel, who is currently the immortal inside of our server. And we're gonna get all of our questions answered. What is it, my friends? My name is Echo, and I want to welcome Captain Nemo to the channel. My man, thanks for coming through for this interview. I have so many questions for you regarding immortality. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. This is really exciting. Uh, I'm excited to hear what kind of questions you got cooked up for me. I am currently the immortal on the uh, on the server, so I'm, I'm ready to answer them. Let's, let's get going. Yeah, and let's actually start out by saying when you and I started Diablo Immortal, we started the Scrappy Echoes. You've kind of built this whole empire of people joining us. We never planned on being immortals because I'm an immortal with you right now, but you are the, the number one immortal. We never planned on it. We were like shadows for life, but quickly we became the immortals. So I guess the first thing I want to ask is why either the change of heart or how did it turn out to work out that way? How come we are the immortals when that was never our plan that's a good that's a good point echo actually me and you both are like shadows for life <laughs> we don't want to be immortal and i guess maybe uh, you know fate comes with a sense of humor because we are now the immortals and i am the immortal the guy who never wanted immortality to begin with pretty interesting the, the reason this happened is because we had a shadow war uh and there was a whole bunch of scrappy we had like four scrappy echo clans uh, on the server we're actually starting a fifth one Lots of folks are joining, so if you want to come join, make sure you come to the Discord server that Echo will link below. And that's where a lot of the folks are. We had four clans going in, and basically what ended up happening was in the Shadow War, and I know Echo made a whole bunch of videos about it. I did as well, if you want to see the details. But it was uh, kind of like a free-for-all at the end there. And me and two of my clan mates, as you're watching this on the screen right now, we basically had a little bit of a strategy to try to survive. And it wasn't really that we wanted to be immortal, we were just kind of having fun. And then somehow, some way at the end, we ended up being the three people left. And uh, yeah, we took it down. And me being the leader of the clan, I became the actual immortal himself. So that's kind of how it worked. Yeah, it is crazy when you think about it because it was totally not our plan, but it worked out that way. I think a lot of it had to do with the structure that we have, right? We have four Scrappy Echo clans, all highly organized, all with a ton of people, officers. And when you have that kind of strength going in that kind of organization, it really does help out when you're in these types of Shadow War events. So I think that really did help us along the way. Now, Nemo, I know you work a full-time job. You have your own YouTube channel, which is the Scrappy Academy YouTube channel. Go check him out, guys. If you haven't, he puts out regular Diablo Immortal videos as well. On top of that, you play Diablo Immortal every day, which, I mean, even if you are an adventurer in the game, you know, this takes time throughout your day. It's not a game that you just log on to for a few minutes and play. You're spending hours inside of the game. And on top of that, you're part of running our entire Scrappy Echoes group. You know, everyone inside of the server organizing all the events. So what do you do now as an immortal? Like, what does the day look like for you? Because I know being the immortal, plus in charge of everything that goes on in the server and doing everything for YouTube and work, you have a very busy day in front of you. So for someone that's maybe watching this and saying, I wanna be the immortal, I wanna be the number one in the server, what can you give them as far as tips or expectations that they should have if they ever decide to or make their way into that position? That's a very good question, Echo. So immortality is really more like a burden. It really isn't a gift. And a lot of people would consider it to be a gift, you know, having the, the statue, being the immortal, being on the wall of honor, having the cool capes and etc. At the end of the day, as a shadow, you really, at this point, the way the game is right now, you get more stuff. You can get a lot more things. Immortality is really fully worth it in my opinion. But what you need to do when you become immortal, you normally have to do your dailies, right? So as a regular immortal or as an elite or as a, one of the, the captains or even an officer, you have to do your dailies. And those are normally consist of like salvage an item, do a bunch of stuff. And the dailies are really like a leaderboard for all of the immortals because the highest people that have the most contribution to do all the dailies or the best dailies are able to kind of pick the best stuff out of the vault, which is one of the things that you get as an immortal if you're able to keep it because the shadows are of course raiding it. But as the immortal, on top of everything, you also have to coordinate this, right? So you have to do your dailies, which is good. Now, on top of that, there's also the vault that you have to defend. Remember, if you want to keep the rewards as an immortal, you need to make sure that you defend the vault. But now as the immortal, you need to make sure that all of the immortals are defending the vault. 
You also need to make sure that all the immortals are doing their dailies because remember, as the immortals, you are all for one and one for all. If the immortals aren't doing their dailies, you're not gonna get enough contribution to progress your reign. And progress your reign is all about pretty much upgrading things, right? By doing a whole bunch of more activities, by getting stronger, by getting more buffs, by upgrading your vault. There's a lot involved with this, but it all starts with everybody working together to make sure that they progress the reign by doing their dailies and by defending the vault. The vault is completely out of control right now. The way the system is set up is quite crazy. In fact, there isn't really a queue system or anything else involved. So as the immortal, I have to facilitate this. So I had to make sure I come up with a system where we have like a line and a queue of people going in and defending the vault. This all takes a lot of time. Now this vault is twice a day. So from 12 to two server time and seven to nine server time, you have to defend the vault every day. So as the immortal, I have to facilitate that. I have to make sure that people are doing it and etc. Now we have amazing people in the family and they are just, I did you know come up with like a system, but basically they're running it right now and there's no issues whatsoever. But if you don't have that, it is gonna be a lot of chaos involved because if you can't defend the vault, you can't do all the rest of the activities as the immortal. So it's quite important to defend the vault. So that's another like really important activity. On top of that, you have to run Kian's Ordeal, which is run preferably every day, but normally probably twice or three times a week. And three times a week, you have to have this Corvus Expedition, which is a 15 minute thing. And on top of that, if you get challenged because the shadows are coming for you, then on Sunday, you gotta be ready for the Rite of Exile. So if you think about it, that's like every day you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. And if you're the immortal, you have to organize it and then grind yourself. There's a lot of work, Echo. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I'm hearing that right now. And I'm just thinking about people that are mobile gamers playing this. Now, people that play Diablo 3 and Diablo 2, like they're used to, although this even, in my opinion, has more grind to it, they're still used to action RPG games that have that kind of grind to level up. So those players, this isn't something crazy for, but mobile gamers, when you think about mobile gamers that play games like Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Brawl Stars, or, you know, any games like that, they're pretty quick. You play a two or three minute round and you can put your phone down. Diablo Immortal has not proven to be like that, especially as the Immortal. This is a much deeper dive into gaming. So I think one of the things that you've proven here, Nemo, is that if you wanna be the Immortal, you have got to have time for your grind, for organizing everyone that's really holding your um, immortality, and just for being on top of everything that's going on in the server, because if you're looking to hold immortality, you don't want to lose it. You want to be up to date, up to schedule, and beating everything along the way, defending your vault, striking on Kion's, Kion's ordeal. And if you get challenged, you want to win those challenges. So now, I guess you kind of talked about this already a little bit, but tell me, Nemo, what are, maybe, what's one of the best things about being the Immortal? And what's one of the worst things about being the Immortal? Sure. There's a lot of bad things about being the Immortal. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, one of the best things I would say about being the immortal is the lore, um, the whole idea of it, right? At the end of the day, if you really look at immortality and all of that really high level, you're supposed to be the defender of sanctuary. You're supposed to defend them against hell itself. It's a position that is, like I said, a burden, but in every, you know, sort of like a hero in a sense has to carry a burden, right? They have to do something. So this is kind of what the immortals are. It really isn't supposed to be like the shadows are coming for you every time. It's kind of like a, a harmonious kind of like a balance between the shadows and the immortals and the immortals play their own role. So it's a really cool idea. Um, and I love the lore of it, to be honest with you. I also love the fact that the immortals have their own little section up top where they can go and hang out together. There's like a, an immortal chat. The, like when you're an immortal, you get your own little chat. So it's kind of cool having the three clan alliance and having the chat. Things like that, it's a social, it's very much a social, uh, faction that requires people to work together as a team in order to do stuff. So uh, that's very cool as well. It isn't one of those like, hey, you know, I'm going to be the best and you're going to be underneath of me. It's like everyone has to work together. So everyone tries to do the challenges together and help everyone. And so it's like really a nice kind of a thing. The one thing that I don't like, or I guess I should say not the one thing, but the, <laughs> the biggest thing that I don't like about immortality is the politic. Not just the politics while you're doing stuff, but as the immortal, having to deal with everybody in their politics, right? There's so much stuff that's going on between the vault, between the contribution, between who can run and who can't run Kian's ordeal, between who's gonna get the stuff in the vault and who isn't. All of that drama 
comes together and as the immortal you're literally sitting there on top and if you're not careful if you're not very good at being a manager because that's really what it ends up being at the end of the day you're managing a company of well i'm managing a company of 300 people right and if you want to be immortal you're doing the same thing you have to be fair you have to make sure that you don't just do stuff for your friends you have to make sure that everybody works together right the immortals themselves are all for one and one for all. The the 300 people have to make sure that they're doing their stuff and they, they, they should be doing it because they want to. So it's a very, very tough balance. It's like a razor's edge and the politics are just insane. I almost feel like the immortals are made to lose, you know, with all of the stuff that's going on, with the way the systems are set up. And now specifically with the vault being really hard to queue, people are just trying to jump in and get their own contribution because that gives them better action in the vault. You know, between that and the Keon's ordeal and whatever, it just makes things really hard, uh, unnecessarily hard. And the drama is my, I, I just can't stand it, to be honest with you. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to be immortal is because of the drama. And here I am trying to manage it. Well, I have to say you're doing a good job, as is everyone else that's kind of following along with your, with your guidance and keeping everyone in line. I think we're doing a great job over there. But I do see the burden that you're holding as well as the immortal. With that being said, you kind of mentioned it too. When you think about Blizzard, when they were making Diablo immortal and they know what it takes to hold immortality, to be an immortal, you know, in their minds, I'm wondering if they're saying, you know, if you want to be the immortal, you have to do all these things and it is a burden. And that's part of what it takes to protect Sanctuary from hell itself. So who knows? I don't know what it's going to look like for players that may get burnt out from from all the amounts of things that need to be done on a regular basis because remember there's a lot of people 300 people is a lot of people to be holding immortality and being responsible for that um so we're gonna see where that goes we're gonna see how long you hold immortality as well i know we're beside you to try and help you do that as well but i mean it sounds like maybe you won't mind if you get knocked down to shadow status sometime in the future. We'll see what happens. But I want to ask you one more thing before we go, Nemo, and that is tips. Because I'm assuming a lot of people watching this video want to know what it's like to be an immortal, and they may want to know what it takes to become the immortal. So I want you to dig into your pockets and think about what are some of the things that you did along the way that helped you get 300 of us as the immortals and for you specifically to be the immortal what are some tips you'd give people that even if they they don't mind the burden they just want that spot what would you tell them so that they can have success in getting there so if you want to be immortal you need to make sure that you have people around you to help you right if the, the immortal himself you have to be the leader of a clan and that clan has to be the top clan that wins right at the end of the shadow war because remember what ends up happening is you need to make sure that you challenge the other immortals and take them down. If you want to be immortal, you got to make sure you challenge the immortal, right? So in order to do that, you have to, of course, do the cycle and make sure you turn it by going into the key, uh, into the rite of exile, by beating the rest of the immortals and initiating something called, uh, I believe it's the battle of the immortal, right? That's when the 30 shadows are going against that one immortal. Remember, the person that's going to be the immortal is the the leader of a clan that's going to win and the clan that's going to win is the one that's going to be last standing so in that 30 v 30 war you have to be the last person or at least your clan has to be the last person standing in order for you to get immortality now when you do and you become immortal your clan automatically becomes immortal but now you can also choose two other clans to go with you so if you're going to be going into this fight you should probably think about who is going to be the other clans i mean it would be best of course if you could stand up three clans of your own and do this, because then you can have an alliance, sort of how, how we did it. But if you don't, you're gonna be sort of forced to alliance with two other clans in order to get this done. There are a few tips like that that you should worry about. Now, as soon as you become immortal, there are things that you need to worry about right away. Like for example, progressing your reign. Your reign as the immortal, you start with a lot less damage, right? The shadows really over time can grow a lot stronger than the immortals can especially if the immortals don't work together. But your biggest thing as the immortal, the first thing that you have to do is start making sure that all of the immortals are working together and preventing any of the drama that comes along with it. You have to make sure that you come up with a good system for the vault. You have to make sure that you're really fair when it comes to the contribution points and etc. And one of the most important things that you have to do is you have to be just. I know it's very difficult, but you can't just 
hand out gear to your friends. You can't just run a Keanzor deal for the first time with all of your best buds and not include everybody else. Remember, the Immortals have to work together and you need all the 299 other ones and you need them to go to war for you. So don't forget them when you're doing things like that. That's the most important thing I think is to be just and to understand that it's really not about you. As the Immortal, you're really about the, the Immortals, not about yourself. And I have to say, when or right after Nemo set up the defend the vault rules about lining up, partying up, I didn't know of it yet. I ran to the front when it was time to lead to ra to protect the vault. Nemo hits me up in a DM. He's like, Echo, get in line. We have a system. So he is very just. He's one of my best friends. And he still told me to hightail it until the back of the line. But man, I think this was really great. You gave some insights. I know a lot of people have been asking me in the comments over on Twitter as well. What's it like? How do you get to be the immortal? I think you did a good job here today answering all of those questions. I want to thank you for coming down to the channel, first of all, and for leading us all through immortality and uh, and being a great leader of the Scrappy Echoes. Now, I know you're going to be putting content about this out on your channel as well. Uh, Scrappy Academy, you want to mention anything about that or your socials? Yeah, for sure. Actually, I have a lot of videos planned for you. It's been two weeks where I took a little bit of a break. Uh, because, well, I've been working, as you see, as the immortal trying to get stuff set up or whatever. It took a lot of time. But I have tons of videos actually planned and in the making right now for you uh, about the immortals, about all of the stuff that we're doing. Me and Echo are going to be doing some stuff together. I'm really excited and pumped, so I hope you're you're excited along with, uh, you know, for those videos. And other than that, that's it, Echo. I'll be over there in Scrappy Academy and hopefully here on the channel again for the next collab. I will invite you back, Nemo. Okay, I will do it. But thanks so much for coming through today. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, if you want to know everything and more about Diablo Immortal, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell and go check out the Scrappy Academy YouTube channel, which I'll be linking in the description of this video. And if you want to join us in Norm Immortality and being part of our server, the Discord link is in the description of this video. And we are looking for people globally, not just in our server. We have family everywhere and we're looking to fill some spots. So come on through. Nemo, thanks so much, man. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and be good.